Good afternoon and welcome to the Tameside Reporter Football Preview Show. I'm your host Tom Gregan and joining me as always is our resident sports reporter Mark Phillip. Mark, you okay? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. A bit crisp here at Bowerfold, but uh, it's all good. It is nippy and as Mark said there, as you can see, we're at Bowerfold this week because the big news has come from Stalebridge Celtic. Paul Phillips and Steve Halford have been sacked by the club after just five months in charge and been replaced very swiftly by Steve Burr, the former manager, returning to Bowerfold. He left Southport about a fortnight ago now. Mark, what's your uh, initial reaction to the news? Initial reaction, disappointment, huge disappointment actually. feel really bad for Paul Phillips and Steve Halford. I didn't think they were given enough time to come and implement what they actually wanted to achieve here. Obviously the odds were stacked against them. Um, uh, they'd only managed three victories uh, during the five month spell here at Bowerfold, but I think they needed more time. I thought they'd assembled a decent squad for next season, especially if they were relegated to the Evo Six Premier yeah. Division. They know that division very, very well. Of course, he uh, managed to get Ashton United into the playoffs for three consecutive seasons. Well, Mark spoke to uh, one of the departing managers, Paul Phillips, yesterday, so uh, let's see what he had to say. Paul, first of all, commiserations about your recent situation with Staley Bridge Celtic. What I and the viewers will want to know is, how did it come about? We got a phone call yesterday morning, obviously the game was off on Tuesday evening, um, just informing us that the football club was uh, dispensing of minor Stephen services. Um, come a bit of a shock, but hey, that's football. Now, obviously Steve Burst took over his return to Celtic, and I've read some comments online, and you feel a bit aggrieved that he's come or returned in the manner that he has. Can you elaborate on that for us? I don't want to elaborate too much, but all I would say is, Whenever we've moved about in football, or myself and Stephen, or we've gone into management roles, we've always found that we've always approached the people that are taking over, and we've always tried to be up front as possible with people. And without, listen, football's football, everyone knows that what goes on behind the scenes with players, managers, we can take that. But I just think, in some cases, and this being one, that the respect shown for myself and Stephen has been zero. Now, you took on the role in September and you inherited a squad which had lost seven of their opening eight league games. Now, you had a big job to turn it around. You brought in a lot of fresh, new faces to the squad, the majority of them coming from Ashton United. Do you felt that they could have saved Celtic's season? Yeah, I th listen, I think there's a massive over-egging of who we brought in from Ashton United. No matter which manager you look at and which manager you look if a, if a su successful manager goes to another club, whether it be in the Premier League or a non-league, you always find that it takes a nucleus of good players out of your nose. At the end of the day, when we went to Celtic, a lot of the money that we had on the budget was already tied up with contracted players who, with no disrespect at the time, were not pulling up trees. So we had a very limited budget for what we could get and where we could go for players that had been successful around this area. And one of the teams that, obviously, lucky enough to be successful was Ashton United. It was no disrespect to them, but it was just a footballing matter that a lot of the good players and the players that we knew and what they could be capable of were situated there. But if you look at the other players, we took players from... We did sign a lot of players, but if you look at the injuries we had, I don't think we had any luck. We had a lot of injuries. We had players, obviously, Keel went last week, we lost Fraser off or before. And in football, you need you need a bit of luck. And we never, we never had the luck that hopefully would have got us out of mm -hmm. it. But... Saying that, we still wasn't we were still in a better situation now than they would have been three or four months ago if they would have stood still and kept the players on board, and that's no disrespect to the previous regime either. Well, Mark Paul, clearly disappointed with his departure there. Absolutely, and I think he has a right to be a little bit disappointed, maybe a little bit angry as well at the way he's been treated. Um, well, as I mentioned a moment ago, I didn't think they were given enough time, five months is no spell for you know, two managers to come in and reverse the fortunes of a club which have really been struggling over the past few seasons. The inherited side which had only, uh, sorry, they'd lost seven of their opening eight games. It was an uphill battle from the moment they stepped foot here at Bowerfold. They gave it a good shot and I think they've got every right to be proud of themselves. So we're disappointed that Phillips and Holford have left, but Steve Burr's come in to replacement, come in to replace them, I should say. What do you make of uh, what do you make of that appointment? It's a strange one, really, because I see Steve Burr as an accomplished uh, national league manager. So is it a know, bit of a coup then for Staley Bridge? Yeah, massively. I think um, he's done well everywhere he's been. Really, of course, he gave Staley Bridge Celtic fans some of the best times in the club's history between 2007 and 2010. Uh, if Celtic do get relegated this season, and it looks pretty nailed on at the moment. 
I don't see them, you know, avoiding relegation. Then he will be managing a team in the Evo Stick Premier Division. Uh, I think Rob Gorski's promised him money to rebuild the squad for next season. Uh, only time will tell. So, do I think it's a coup? Yeah, I do. Well, back to on-pitch masses now. Uh, Staley Bridge aren't playing this weekend. They're back in action at Bowerfold on Tuesday night against Salford City. That's in the Manchester Premier Cup semi-final. Mark, it's going to be a, a difficult night if they are going to get to the final, Staley Bridge. Absolutely, and of course it will mark Steve Burr's first game in charge since returning to Celtic. Salford City, you do not want to be taking on no. the Amis at the moment. They are in fine form. They beat league leaders AFC Fylde. 5-0 last weekend, you know, the stadium's currently being developed at Moor Lane. It's heading in the right direction for uh, Salford City at the moment. So it's going to be a difficult night for Steve Burt in his first game on Tuesday night. But good luck to Staley Bridge in the Manchester Premier Cup. We'll talk about Curzon Ashton now elsewhere in the National League North. Because they were at home to Bradford Park Avenue on Saturday. Could have done Staley Bridge a favour in that relegation fight. But it didn't turn out that way. They fell 2-1. A shock result, Mark. Yeah, a quite shocking result. I wasn't expecting that one. I thought Kurz and Ashton were going to build on the two impressive victories against uh, Fylde and Darlington. <coughs> it wasn't to be the case. Uh, I'm sure John Flanagan will be disappointed. However, having secured those victories, those important victories against Fylde and Darlington, I don't think they've got much to worry about. Had they not won them games and Bradford won last week, it really would have dragged them into it. The last three or four weeks, has that been a snapshot of Curzon's season? Because as you said, they got two brilliant results mm. against Fylde and Darlington and then only took one point from six from home games against Stable Bridge and Bradford. Well, you look at Curzon Ashton's season, throughout the entire season they've done pretty well against the teams vying for the you know, for promotion or the playoffs and almost struggled against the teams that are struggling this season. It's quite weird to see how Curzon have fared, but uh, like I said then, they've got nothing to worry about this season. We've seen glimpses of real quality over the past few weeks, and if they can find that form which starts uh, tomorrow at Kidderminster Harriers, then uh, they should be good. But you've mentioned some of the going to Kidderminster Harriers tomorrow. That's going to be a really tough game. Kidderminster are probably mm. one of the best teams in this division. One of the best teams. I'm sure they'll be hoping to secure a playoff spot this season. You know, if things don't go according to plan for AFC Fylde, then that opportunity presents itself to steal first spot along with Salford City. So uh, who knows how it's going to pan out. Hopefully Curzon can return from Agbra uh, with the three points tomorrow. Well, Kidderminster have won seven out of their last nine games, so uh, it's going to be a difficult afternoon for Curzon, but the best of luck to the Nash. On to the Evo Stick Premier Division now, and Curzon's crosstown rivals, Ashton United. They played twice this week. On Saturday, they were at home to Sutton Coldfield Town and ran out 3-1 winners, but on Monday night, they made the trip to Stour Bridge and returned empty-handed after a 4-1 Demolition, shall we say, mm. Mark? It was. Uh, we sort of expected these results. Well, well, yeah. Ashton won't be too disappointed with a three-point return, will they? I don't think they'll be too disappointed, but I think they'll be a little bit disappointed at the 4-1 loss mm. at Stour Bridge. Of course, we all know Stour Bridge have been excellent this season. They find some real good form. They're currently vying for a playoff spot. They went through that period in the FA Cup where they did really well. Unfortunately, they were beaten at League Two Wickham Wanderers at the end of January. So they have done pretty well. But a 4-1 scoreline, I don't think Jordy Badham and Will Haining will be too pleased about that. Well, hopefully they can make amends at Barwell tomorrow. Uh, Barwell currently sitting 11th, three places, but just one point above Ashton United. If Ashton win tomorrow, Mike, they can climb as high as 10th. So it's quite a big, uh, quite a big trip. Yeah, it's certainly it's a massive trip, and I think if Ashton do have ambitions of securing a playoff spot this season, they are currently ranked as outsiders, then they need to get the three points at Barwell tomorrow. But looking at Barwell's form, they've drawn four of their last five league outings. Uh, you know, the two sides last met in October, and that game ended 0-0. Hopefully it won't be a repeat of that scoreline. Can I just get a prediction for you? Uh, I'm going to go for a big scoring game. I'm going to go for 3 all. Three all. Three all. Certainly an entertaining game in prospect if that turns out to be true. Uh, they're in action again, Ashton United, on Tuesday in the Dewton Week Up third round. They host Farsley Celtic, who of course sit a division below Ashton. This presents a good opportunity for Ashton to perhaps win a bit of silverware this season. Do you yeah, think? brilliant opportunity because of course, as I said then, they are outsiders to reach the playoffs this season. It is an uphill battle. However, they remain in this competition. If they can progress and win some silverware. That would be great and it would be a, you know, a recommend, not a recommend, Recommendation, a commendment of Jordy Bannim and Will Haining's first season in charge. Well, good luck to Ashton in their fixtures this week. We'll move on now to the Evo Stick Division 1 North, where Droylston were involved in definitely the game of the week, mm. perhaps one of the games of the season. They were hosting Tadcaster Albion at the Butcher's Arms and were 3-0 down after 51 minutes, but turned it round to come back and win 4-3. Mark, what was your reaction when you saw you know, the, the scores coming through? 
one of sheer delight, <laughs> I think. And I'm sure all the Charleston fans that attended that game, when they were 3 0 down, they'll have probably been thinking, oh, let's go and get a pint yeah. instead. I'm sure they'll uh, have enjoyed that one very, very much. Of course, it put an end to a, a one game losing spell for, well, not a spell, but a one game loss for Droylston. Had they not lost that game in the week previously, you know, they'd be looking at a playoff spot now. It's those fine margins. Well, they currently sit in 11th. Unfortunately, they don't have a game this weekend, so they can't sort of capitalise on mm. that momentum. Do you think the playoffs are a, a step too far for Droylston this season? I think season? they are, because they lost a week previously. Had they collected six points from six, then I'm sure they will have been challenging for a playoff spot. They've also played a lot more games than the teams in and around them. But uh, I think a mid-table finish for the Bloods this season would be a great mm. achievement, because it was only at the start of January that we were saying, you know, they'll be looking over the shoulders yeah. nervously. Well, one team that is definitely looking to get to the playoffs this season is Gloss at North End. They were involved in two games this week. First of all, on Saturday, they made the short trip to Bamber Bridge and lost 2-0. Disappointing result. But then on Tuesday, they picked up a great result at Trafford, man. Mm, yeah. Surprise of the week for me, that one. I was not expecting Glossop to return from Trafford you know, with any points. They secured the three points thanks to Max Leonard in the 20th minute. That took his tally to 16 for the season. You know, And of course, Jamie Rainford uh, recently departed for Colwyn Bay, so I'm sure Max Leonard will be hoping to fill that void. Well, Glossop are involved in probably the biggest game of the week involving the team side teams this week. They travelled to Fars with Celtic, who sit in fourth. Glossop sits in fifth, but there's five points separating yeah. them, so Glossop really need a win. I think it's a must win if they do have ambitions of securing that playoff spot. Of course, there's five points that separate the sides at the moment. You know, a win for Glossop would really bring them right back into it, but it's going to be a really tight end to the season, and of course, it's going to be very, very exciting. Well, like Ashton, Glossop are also in Dutton Wake Up third round action on Tuesday, travelling to Bamber Bridge, hoping to avenge that 2-0 defeat from Saturday. We'll move on to Hyde United now, who were also involved in a pretty thrilling game at uh, Ewan Fields on Saturday. They, won they beat Scarborough Athletic 3-2. This was also a, a shock result, Mark. A really shocking result. I mean, Hyde United have struggled this season, it has to be said. But of late, you know, they've secured back-to-back -back league victories. 3-2 win over Scarborough Athletic, a great result and one that does definitely confirm the Tigers' place in this division next yeah. season. 15 points above the relegation zone now, so I don't think the Tigers have got too much to worry about. Although they have got a very difficult trip to Trafford on Saturday, mm. Mark. They have produced some good results this season, Hyde, mm. beating some of the top teams. Can they repeat it tomorrow? Well, let's not forget, I think it was the first game of 2017. They beat uh, Glossop 2-1. Of course, Glossop went to Trafford earlier this week and, and beat them 1-0. Yeah. So, uh, judging by that form, there's no reason why Hyde cannot steal the three points. So, the last team we've got to talk about is, of course, Mosley, who are really struggling at the moment. And their uh, miseries were compounded last weekend when they travelled to Colne and fell 2-1. Mark, that leaves Mosley just eight points mm. above the relegation zone now. Should the Willie Whites be worried? I mean, eight points, it's quite a cushion, but, you know, if they keep with this horrible, horrible form and the other teams below them start picking up victories, then it will really drag them into it. You look at the game this weekend, it does not get any easier, does it, for Peter Van's side. They take on league leaders, Lancaster City. I can't see them picking up the three points here. However, they don't have a game next Tuesday. Well, as Mark said, they do have a game next Tuesday. They're hosting Radcliffe Borough, who sits in 17th. That is, that is the big game. They yeah. won't expect to get anything against Lancaster, no. but if they're going to stay up, they've got to beat Radcliffe, surely. They've got to beat Radcliffe, but where are they going to find the goals from? We've seen Andy Keogh and Mike Fish, who are the club's leading goal scorers, leave for uh, different clubs uh, this week or the past two weeks. There's been about an exodus of about 10 players leave Seal Park. It's quite strange to see. I think Peter Band has cited money reasons for uh, the players leaving the club, so hopefully they can pick up at least three points from these next two games. Otherwise, it could be a nervy end to the season. Well, good luck to Mosley and good luck to all our teams involved in action this weekend and throughout next week. Don't forget for a more in-depth roundup of Tameside football, you can listen to Tameside Radio tonight at six o'clock, where myself, Mark, Lee and Martin are on the Sporting Spotlight.